hey gunners welcome back to another video and today is something a bit different again and i'm going to go through Mikel Arteta criticizing aspects of his management and i know that sounds crazy considering how good a job Mikel Arteta has done for us but i feel as though now we're at the top level and everybody is for this process we can finally come together to constructively criticize Mikel Arteta and his in-game management against Aston Villa in particular there were many moments in the game which were disappointing to see. I feel like Mikel Arteta is repeating some of the mistakes that he was recovering from last season. For example, I'm going to start with his team selection. And I think he doesn't trust his squad enough. And this is a massive, massive issue. Reese Nelson signed a new contract at the beginning of the season on a hundred grand a week. And that is the sort of wage you'd play even a first team player. But Reese Nelson has hardly played minutes to show that he is worth that 100 grand per week. And Mikel Arteta would have promised Reese Nelson a sufficient amount of game time. I almost feel sorry for him, but I also feel sorry for Bakayo Saka, who's absolutely getting rinsed these days by rival fans and even our own fans. And it's a shame to see because he's being put through a ridiculous amount of minutes. For a player of his quality, we know it's hard to replace what he brings to this side. But there's got to come a point where you have to put him on the bench and play some of your other players. Vieira can play there. Nelson is there. Smith Rowe. Martinelli's been tried there. Trossard. Jesus. There's so many options there for Mikel Arteta. But he still persists with Bukayo Saka. And this can come back to bite us. Even Manchester City with their strongest side. Phil Foden is given rest. De Bruyne is given rest. You don't actually see these players playing every game they're fit and available for. And unfortunately, we can either blame Mikel Arteta or the transfer strategy because he obviously doesn't trust the players to come in and replace Bukayo Saka. And this is not good enough. On to the next thing, which is quite an important thing, especially for a club that wants to be unpredictable against every single team they play against. There's some games which won't suit certain players. And unfortunately, sometimes those players are our senior players. For example, Leandro Trossard, there's certain games in which he won't suit. A game against Aston Villa where you need patience and calmness. Leandro Trossard at times, I think he lacks that unless it's in front of goal. There were so many times where he would almost rush a pass or he would find himself in too advanced of a position, leaving Zinchenko a bit isolated. Who I think didn't play well, but the sort of slander I'm seeing towards him is a bit excessive. Also, Martin Odegaard, a brilliant first half, but in the second half, when Aston Villa went into a mid block and it was hard for us to penetrate through them, there's certain players such as Smith Rowe and Vieira who were sitting on the bench that should have been brought on earlier. And I know it hurts. Martin Odegaard is our captain, but we've got to understand that there's certain games in which he will struggle. There's certain blocks, defensive shapes, which he won't play to the high standard we know he can. This idea of lack of experimentation and lack of trust in his squad and not understanding which players in his squad play well against certain teams is my next point for example we could see early signs there of the smith row and bukayo saka connection there was many mini runs that smith row was doing against aston villa which opened up space for bukayo saka and that created more opportunity for him to show his quality and i know it was only glimpses and we need to see this over a full 90 minutes, but it can be done. Mikel Arteta really needs to try it more often. I've always thought that Martin Odegaard's bias towards his left foot would be better used on that left centre mid roll. Next to Declan Rice in the six, with Smith Rowe on the right of midfield behind Bukayo Saka. These sort of changes need to happen. And it's not going to happen by Mikel Arteta consistently playing the same players in the same positions even when it's not working. To be fair to him though, the fact he brought on Smith Rowe for Odegaard, even though he does state it was a bit of an injury, it was a bold move and I like to see that. Even though people would criticise him and didn't know that Odegaard was injured and questioned it, he is the manager for a reason. He's got to make those decisions. He's got to see the game and see which players are suited towards that match and game state. And the final thing I just want to talk about is the use of Kai Havertz. We've seen how successful he can be in that number nine position, but Mikel Arteta decides to drop him in that, I would say nine slash 10 slash eight hybrid. 
And I think this can be bad for a player like Kai Havertz. He really runs off confidence. And he had that confidence in the number nine position. You could see he had the conviction. But against Aston Villa, I don't know if it's a psychological thing. But him running from deep onto those balls from Zinchenko, you just didn't feel as confident with him scoring. And he lost that when he was in the number nine position. So it's something for Mikel Arteta to digest and think about. Why should he change the way a player who thrives off confidence position, especially when it has been so successful? But I would actually put this down to naivety and his age. A lot of managers build this sort of confidence in their players to play that certain position. And all these different things I've touched upon, that changes and you can get better with this as you're in the job for longer. So although it does seem it was a bit of a critical video, I feel like us as Arsenal fans, the fact that we all now believe in this project, we can pick up this stuff and heavily criticise Arteta. We know that he's good enough to adapt and get better. But as fans, we shouldn't be afraid to criticise certain things we didn't like to see. And I'm going to end the video there. But if there's anything in the game which sparked your interest, and you thought was a bit naive or a bit poor from Arteta, please put that down below in the comments. Anyway, that's it for now. Peace.